Okay, so welcome back everyone. Matthew's Tech Tutorials UK here, and today guys I'm going to be showing you how to set up a virtual machine using VMware Workstation 12 Player. Now, I did try and do a virtual machine video uh, a few months ago, but I had to cancel and scrap that idea because I was having a few issues with Hyper-V, which is in Windows 8, 8.1 and 10. But I've now gone back down to Windows 7, which I'm going to stick with now because I'm sick to death in the operating systems. Trust me, if you can stay away from them, do it. They're just a nightmare. Um, but Windows 7, in my opinion, is best anyway. But anyway, go back on subject. Um, so yeah, so there is a few operating system virtual machine software which you can use. You can use either, well, I've got Oracle Virtual Machine Virtual Box installed as well. Um, but obviously today I'm going to be showing you how to do it in VMware Workstation 12 Player. So first of all, guys, you're going to head over to this website. Link will be in the description. It's uh, vmware.com. Uh, so if you go to this website and you search for VMware Workstation Player, You'll download for Windows. Don't ask us to do it on Linux or Mac. I like I say, this is only a Windows video. If you're using another operating system, then don't continue watching this video. Go find somewhere else. But uh, this is this tutorial is only going to be for Windows. So as soon as you download it and install it, just hit next, next, next. And uh, when you run VMware Player, it'll ask you if you want to use it for, I believe, a commercial use or home use. Make sure you click on a home use, and you just put in your email address. And uh, they'll probably send you emails, but you can, if you don't want them, just add them to your block list or unsubscribe in the future. So once you've done that and you open up VMware Workstation Player, you'll be brought to this oh, twice there. Sorry, you'll be brought to this little menu here. So it'll be uh, obviously, as you can see, it's non-commercial use only. So I'm not going to use it commercial. I'm not going to use it for home use anyway. So what, first off, you're going to do you have to make sure you've got a file. So we're going to be using and it's going to be a bit old, but we're going to be using Windows XP on this tutorial. I can use Window another version of Windows, but I just think I'll just use XP because it's the most handiest one I've got at the moment. So I've got an ISO file and I've also got the license key for it. So if you go to just here where self-explanatory, so if you go to create a new virtual machine, you're then going to make you well, if you've got the ISO file on a, on a burnt disk, you can this is where you insert the disk and you can use it on your disk drive and install it from there. But we've got it as a file. So I'm going to use it as the ISO, so we're going to click on the second option, which is ISO. And we've already found it, but I'm just going to go and find it. So we're going to go to Browse, Desktop, on the Windows XP folder, and choose the ISO image. You might notice here it will say the operating system will use Easy Install. Don't panic. What that is, it's actually, it's actually a really good feature that VMware is implementing into their software. Uh, rather than you having to obviously hit Next, 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 and configure everything, you basically literally just sit back and watch the uh, the program do it for you. All you've literally got to do is enter your product key if the one you provide doesn't work. So we're going to, I'll show you in a second. So if we just hit next, oh, there we go, product key. So I'm just going to grab the product key here. And I don't mind if you guys use this one because it's a public one, I believe. There we go. So hit next. So what we're going to call the virtual machine. So we're going to call it Windows XP Home Edition. And the location, this is where you can choose where you want to store it. So I'm going to store it on my other drive because my SSD is getting a little bit full here. Actually, I think I will keep my SSD actually just for this video. So we'll make a folder on the desktop. New folder. And I'll call it uh, Windows XP VM. And hit OK. And I'm just going to hit Next. Now, this is where it's going to ask for the maximum disk size. So I'm, Windows XP, like as you know, doesn't use much. I'm just going to set it as 15 gig. Um, now, you can either store virtual disk as a single file or you can split it into multiple files. I would suggest just leaving it as it is and leaving it as so it splits into, into multiple files just because, um, like I say, if it splits into, into multiple files it might be able to make loading a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to hit next here. Now you can, this is uh, where it just basically tells you how much RAM and stuff you've given it. So if you want to change that, if you just go to customize hardware here, as you can see you've got a few more options. So memory is RAM, so Windows XP does not need much, so I'm just going to up it to one gigabyte, which is 1024. The recommended memory obviously is 512, but like I say, you can go maximum if you need, but that's only if you're going to be using this for commercial use, but we're only using it for basic uh, this is a tutorial. So. so here we go. So next is the processors, how many cores you want to give it. I'm just going to give it one core, because it's only Windows XP. Uh, next one is a CD drive if you want to use a, a CD drive, etc. This is where you configure your uh, network adapter. Now, I believe that by default, uh, it should be set, if it's set to NAT, it should automatically share and uh, configure it all for you. So, it, as soon as you power up the machine and install it, it should automatically install and work. So, once, uh, the rest of it I'm just going to leave. So, we're going to close this. So, power on the virtual machine onto creation. So, we're going to hit finish. And there you go. So, you're now. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, it will say easy install is going to be installing it for us. So, I'll we'll just try and hide this here. 
Um, as you can see, I don't have to press any, I'm not even pressing any keys at all. This supposed easy installer is doing it all for me. So what we'll do guys, once this is installing, we'll be back once uh, the virtual machine has been successfully installed. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, so the installation is not yet completed, but uh, just to keep you guys updated. So what it's doing at the moment is, I've just copied all the files over. So I'm, I'm sure many of you guys remember this old good old screen, seeing the uh, Windows XP installation screen, which unfortunately not many of you will see anymore because it's unfortunately not supported by Microsoft anymore, which is such a shame, because it was a good operating system. But whilst uh, it's loading, guys, I'm just going to show you a few features of what these little icons up here, etc. mean. So, basically, these are little status indicators. So, when you look at your computer, if you've got them installed, or if you've got a custom build, which might not even have them installed, um, as you can see, they're, ba they're literally just indicators. So, this one here is the hard drive, so obviously that'll be flashing when, when the hard drive's doing something. And you've got the CD, so basically it's... Um, Obviously, it's a virtual disk, so it's basically virtually showing that this, uh, our virtual CD drive, which it, which Windows XP thinks we're using, because uh, obviously it has to virtualize it because we're using an ISO image. As you can see, that's flashing because it's still reading. Next one is floppy, but we have got a floppy in there. And then obviously, if you're using the internet, the network adapts will be flashing, etc., etc. So if you go into settings here, you can also change your virtual machine settings whilst it's running, but I wouldn't suggest doing it because you can't. It, obviously, you will have to give the machine a restart, I believe. Uh, or switch it off. So as you can see, you can only change a few things, so not, not even the RAM you can't change. So you will have to power down the machine. But just going back into it again, so if you actually go into options here, uh, you can also rename the virtual machine. So maybe you've got Windows XP, Windows 7, Vista, multiple ones if you're going to be using that, say, in an office environment. Power, so our power options, you can either make the virtual machine enter a full screen after powering on, if you wanted to say if you're on a battery or so sorry if you're on a laptop you can also get it to report battery information to the guest account shared folders so basically if you want to share folders either between virtual machine or maybe uh, from a map network drive which is on your network VM tools so uh, I'm not too sure what this does I believe this is uh, when you when you actually run the virtual machine it might ask you to install some software which uh, allows you to run the virtual machine to run a bit smoothly and obviously do a few things like just move in and out of the window rather than having to keep pressing keys. Uh, Unity, we're just going to skip that one and obviously lock, auto login. So uh, Windows XP is going to ask you for a key, so I'm just going to find a key guys and I'll be back in a second once this is fully installed. Okay, so we're back. So the operating system uh, Windows XP is now installed. Just getting the uh, good old welcome screen here, so we're just going to wait for this to load and hopefully it should load up no errors or well hopefully it should load up pretty quickly anyway so let's just sit here but anyway so you guys were thinking well what would you be using a virtual machine for now i'll say sorry before we go into that this is the vmware tools so when you obviously launch it it will quickly install and might do a quick reload of the operating system so uh also i think the tools just operates the print drivers uh, uh, uh display drivers all that sort of uh nonsense all those uh little quick things but anyway so what's that's doing so you're probably thinking, what, um, what are we using it for? So, say for example, uh, you've got a old program, for example, and it doesn't support maybe when doesn't only runs on Windows XP or only runs on Vista, and your primary operating system, well, as mine is, is Windows Seven, or it might be eight, eight point one, or ten. Now, obviously, if you install the virtual machine, rather than having to obviously install either or run, say for example. Um, uh, try to think of the word now. So you can even so basically, for example, you can either multi-boot a hard drive, so you can either have Windows Seven and XP on, or you can have m as many operating systems as you want. So rather than having to boot into the operating system, and you just want to quickly use that program or something, you can obviously install a virtual machine. So at the moment, uh, as you can see, I've got a, a virtual machine, so I could maybe just flick, say, um, back to my work, and if I need to go back into that program which is incompatible with my operating system, I can just flick back to the virtual machine and do what I need to do, and then flick back maybe. Whatever. So, like I say, you can use it for multiple things, really. Um, most of it is also used for a lot of like training. So, if you say, for example, you're on courses, like I used to do ages ago, you can. Um, we used to do a lot of screenshots and such. And obviously, we didn't want to fill the laptops up with junk, so we just use the virtual machines to show our work, really. So, yes, that's the virtual virtual machine installed. So, just to demonstrate that the internet should be working, um, if we just go to let me just close this here. If we go to Internet Explorer. It should take us straight to the uh, Microsoft website. As you can see, the uh, networking light up here is flashing. Might just take a few seconds because it is just literally... There you go, internet access is all working. So if we just close this here. So if you obviously want to change your display, if you right-click here and go to Properties, 
and then if you go to settings and as you can see here you can change the size of the window so if I change it to 1024 hit apply there you go the window gets a little bit bigger and if I keep making it bigger obviously it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger etc so that's how you change the display so there you go guys so you've now successfully installed your first virtual machine I hope I hope this tutorial has been helpful Next tutorial guys, I'll be showing you how to set up shared folders so you can share folders between say this virtual machine and your main operating system or set up a, a shared folder between your virtual machine and say a network drive but I'll be, I'll be doing that in another video so thanks for watching guys anyway this is uh, part one of the virtual machine little playlist sort of video I'd like to make so hope that's helped any questions or queries like I say please just drop a comment in the box below like or dislike whatever you thought of the video like i say i take all feedback and uh, hopefully subscribe thanks again guys catch you guys later